Shakti. I'm here to lead you through a 45-minute Bikram yoga class. First time we've done this, so we're going to give it a try, see it how it goes. Um, but it doesn't matter the length, 30, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 75. The series is amazing no matter the length of time. Um, so let's get started. I have Jen and Rebecca here. They're going to demonstrate for you guys. If you have a mirror, try to set up in front of a mirror. Uh, so you can see yourself, especially when we're trying to lock our knee. All right, here we go. We're going to start with a breathing exercise called Pranayama Deep Breathing, good for the lungs and respiratory system. You're going to inhale by your nose, exhale by your mouth, all the time using your throat. Breathe as long as possible, as much as possible, as slow as possible. Feet together, toes and heels touching, ten fingers are interlocked underneath your chin. Keep your hands underneath your chin like glue throughout the posture. Relax your shoulders, suck your stomach in. Lock your knees, focus on yourself if you have a mirror, and begin. Inhale, arms up, bring your elbows up as high as possible, suck your stomach in, tighten it up, exhale, head back. Look back behind you, elbows come forward slowly, wrists touch, elbows touch away from your chest. Inhale, arms up, knees are locked, shoulders remain over the hips, spine is straight, inhale, arms up more. Exhale, head back. Mouth is open, eyes open. You're trying to make a ha sound and pushing all of the air out of your lungs, elbows, touch. Inhale. At least six counts. The slower you go, the better. Feel your lungs more and more. Exhale, head back. Mouth open, eyes open, pushing the air out. The more you exhale, the more you can inhale next time. Let's do two more. Inhale. Stomach, stomach stomach. Suck it in. Tighten it up. Hold it in. Exhale, head back. When you exhale, you got to keep the chest lifted. Try not to collapse. When you bring your elbows together, they're at heart level. One more. Inhale. Stomach tight. Inhale more and more. Deepest breath yet. Exhale, head back. Push it all out. This is preparing you for your class. Elbows tight. Good, that's enough. Arms down side. The first asana is half moon pose with hands to feet pose. Feet together, toes and heels touching, arms over your head sideways. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, thumbs crossed. Hands, palms touching each other like glue, up to the wrist throughout the entire posture. Stretch your arms up towards the ceiling and bend your body right and left several times. Right and left, right and left. You should feel stretching down both sides of your body all the way up towards the fingertips. In other words, you're trying to touch the ceiling. When you can't stretch anymore, please stop in the middle. Elbows are locked, arms are always touching with your ears. No gap between your biceps, arms, and ears. Push your hips forward a little bit towards the mirror, opening up your hips and pelvis, upper body leaning back a couple of inches, opening up your chest and rib cage throughout the posture, maximum body weight on the heels. Chin up, arms and head together. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of the waist, touch the ceiling, bend your body to the right. Without bending your elbows or your knees, push your hips to the left. Feel the tremendous stretching feeling down the left side of your body, inside out, bones to skin, fingertips all the way down to your toes, hips forward towards the mirror, upper body is back, keep your weight in the heels. Left hip comes forward, so two hips are in one line, scoop your right shoulder forward, open up your chest, stomach tight, go down, push, 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 inhale, breathing, come up. Stop in the middle, palms tight, elbows locked, inhale, stretch up, touch the ceiling, bend your body to the left. Without bending your elbows or your knees, keep pushing your hips to the right. Feel the tremendous stretching feeling down the right side of your body, inside out, bones to skin, fingertips all the way down to your toes. Stomach is tight, knees are locked. Push your hips forward towards the mirror, upper body back, weight stays in the heels. Right hip comes forward, so your two hips are in one line. S left shoulder comes forward, open up your chest, go down, push. Stomach in, push, push. Inhale, breathe in, come up. Stop in the middle, backward bending. Take a deep breath, full lungs. Drop your head back as far as it goes. Look at the floor behind you, arms back immediately. Try to touch the wall behind you. Bend your total spine backwards from coccyx to the neck. Lower back, middle back, 
upper back, total spine, backward bending. You're trying to fall down backwards. Maximum body weight on the heels, stomach, legs, hips. Everything push forward towards the mirror, arms back, look back, fall back, way back, more back. Amazing. Inhale, breathing, come up. Stop in the middle. Padahistasana, bend your knees and put your hands on the floor in front of you. You're going to move your hips right and left several times. Right and left. Drop your head down. Shake it around. This is a U-turn from back bend to forward bending, so please be careful. Your spine, it's not all the way warmed up yet. All right, keep those feet together. Your toes and heels are touching. Bend your knees and grab your heels from behind. Stepping on all five fingers of each hand, little baby fingers touching each other side by side. Elbows are behind the legs on the calf muscles throughout the posture. Please don't lose the grip. Pull. Pull on your heels and stretch your body down from the lower spine towards the floor. Try to touch your stomach on the thighs, chest on the knees, face on the legs below the knees. So from the side, you look like a Japanese ham sandwich. There's no gap anywhere, no room for light or air. Continuously keep pulling. Pulling is the object of stretching. Exhale, breathing. Lock your knees. Roll forward. Lock your knees. Eyes open. Try to touch your face to your legs. Lock your knees. Last chance. Lock the knees. Lock the knees. Lock the knees. Inhale, breathing in. Come up. Arms and head together. Core tight all the way up. Exhale your arms down. Just try to breathe. Your mouth is closed. Breathe in and out through your nose. Shoulders relax. All right. Awkward pose. Right foot step to the right six inches apart. If you need to measure, you can put your fist between your feet. That's usually about six inches. Feet look like a perfect letter H. Don't change your feet throughout the posture. Arms up, parallel to the floor. Elbows locked. Tricep muscles nice and tight. Contraction. Nothing loose, nothing hanging. Stretch your fingertips forward. Suck your stomach in and sit down. Hips touch the chair. Feet flat, 100% weight on your heels. You're going to lift your chest up. Bend your total spine, backward bending, upper body leaning back. Suck your stomach in. Suck it in. Tighten it up. Hold it in. Rib cage is visible in the mirror. Open up your knees. Keep six inches apart between your knees, feet, and hands. Chest up, chin up, lean back, fall back, way back. You're trying to fall down backwards. Inhale, breathe, and come up. Keep the arms there. Second part, go up on your toes, maximum like a ballerina. Tremendous concentration. Focus one point in the mirror. If you blink your eyes, you might lose your balance. Stretch your spine, chest, head towards the ceiling. Sit down on top of your toes. Leaning against the wall, start to finish, hips and head touching the wall. Sit down halfway until your hips touch the chair. Knees up, chest up, upper body leaning back, spine straight. Go up higher on your toes, knees up higher towards the ceiling. Don't go down below the chair, you're sitting in the chair. Inhale, breathing, come up. Keep your arms there. Third part, go up just a little bit on your toes, squeeze your knees together. Stomach tight, sit down slow. As slow as possible, all the way down, all the way down, leaning against the wall. If you're all the way down there, you have a half inch gap between your hips and heels. Knees are together. Try to press them down and forward towards the floor. Thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the legs, 90 degree angle. So from the side, your body looks like a box. Spine is straight. Squeeze your knees together and go up slow with control, squeezing your knees together all the way up. Right foot back to the place, arms down side, and breathe. Next is Eagle Pose, Garasana, arms over your head sideways. Bring the right arm underneath the left, cross twist, hands together in front of your face, thumbs towards your face, little fingers towards the mirror, if you have a mirror. If you can't get your hands in this prayer position, you can interlace your fingers, and if you can't do that, then you can just grab your shoulders. Wherever you are, you're going to pull your elbows down so you feel a stretch in your shoulder blades. Suck your stomach in and sit down. Hips touch the chair. Upper body leaning back. Stay down there. Lift the right leg as high as possible. Twist like ropes. One day foot goes underneath the calf muscle. Suck your stomach in. Sit down more and lean your upper body back. You want to bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left. To get everything in one line, your feet, knees, elbows, and hands. Suck your stomach in. Pull your elbows down. Lean your upper body back. 
change. Feet together, arms over your head. Now left arm underneath the right. Cross twist, hands together, thumbs towards your face. Pull your elbows down. Feel that stretch in your shoulder blades. Suck your stomach in. Sit down, low chair. Lean your upper body back. Stay there. Lift your left leg as high as possible. Twist like rope. One day foot goes underneath the calf. If you can't hook your foot, that's okay. You're going to squeeze your thighs together super tight. Sit down more. Lean your upper body back. Try to bring the knees to the left, upper body to the right. To get everything in one line, your feet, knees, elbows, and hands, suck your stomach in. Pull your elbows down and lean your upper body back. Change. Feet together, arms over your head, arms down side, and party. Party time. So this is the time in the Bikram class we tell you you can have water, but um, I'm not going to tell you anymore. You can take it whenever you want. Try not to skip the postures, though. Try to do it in between them. Okay. This is Jen's favorite part of class. Ask her, Eagle. All right, balancing series. We're going to do one set of everything. We're going to start with standing head to knee, feet together. Shift weight to your left leg. Lock your knee. Wipe your hands, round your back, suck your stomach in and grab the right foot, a couple of inches below the toes. Ten fingers interlocked, thumbs underneath the foot to start. If you have a mirror, you're looking in the front mirror, standing leg is locked solid concrete. You want to make sure you contract your quadriceps really tight. The leg is not bending or wobbling because your standing leg is locked. Inhale, breathing, right leg lift up. Your leg is parallel to the floor, no higher, no lower, standing leg is locked. Take a deep breath. Continuously kick your right leg, heel forward towards the mirror, flex your foot, so all five toes are turning in towards your face. Good, Jen. If both knees are locked and you have a cramp on both thighs, then you can pull your elbows down. Eventually, elbows go below the calf muscle, and when they do, but no rush, slowly, gently, you're going to tuck your chin to your chest, and touch your forehead to your knee. Change. No rush to do the full expression of the postures. If you do the first part, then you're getting the benefit of the posture. All right, other side. Shift weight to your right leg. Weight is distributed equally the same all over that foot. Foot is flat, grounded into the ground. Lock your knee. Wipe your hands, round your back, suck your stomach in, and grab the left foot. A couple of inches below the toes. Ten fingers interlocked. Thumbs underneath the foot to start. Now make sure that standing leg is locked. If it's bending or wobbling, you must go back to the first part of the posture, which is locking the standing leg. If your knee is locked and you're really sure, then inhale, left leg lift up. Your leg is parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower. Standing leg is locked. Take a deep breath. Continuously kick that left leg. Heel forward towards the mirror. Flex your foot. All five toes are turning in towards your face. If both knees are locked and you have a cramp on both thighs, then you can pull your elbows down. If elbows go below the calf muscle, then slowly, gently tuck your chin to your chest and you touch your forehead to your knee, eyes looking at the belly button. Change. Hands on the hip. If you'd like, do a little back bend. It's optional, you don't have to, but it feels good after the forward bend. Next is standing bow pulling pose. Bring the right hand out, drop it down, and grab your right foot from the inside without flipping that wrist. Five fingers together, thumb touching with the index finger. Left arm up, arm as close as with your ear. Bring your knees together to start. Inhale, breathing, kick up, kick back. Kick up, kick back. Body comes down. Abdomen and chest parallel to the floor. Stretch your fingertips forward. Chin is on top of your shoulder. Relax your right shoulder. Right shoulder invisible behind the left. Two shoulder blades in one line. Continuously keep kicking. Kicking and stretching are equal and simultaneous 50-50. Body down. Kick up. Kick back. Kick up one more time. Change. Yes. All right, other side. Make it fun. Bring the left hand out. Drop it down without flipping the wrist. Grab the left foot from the inside. Thumb is with the index. Right arm up. Arm close with your ear. Helps you keep that chin to shoulder connection. Inhale. Oh, first bring your knees together. Then inhale. Kick up. Kick back. 
Think knee behind you and eventually foot comes over the center of the head. Look at Rebecca's beautiful chin to shoulder connection. She's keeping it all the way down there so she doesn't have to fix it when she's in the full expression. You, the body is down, abdomen and chest, belly button parallel to the floor. Stretch your fingertips forward. Chin is on top of your shoulder. Relax the left shoulder. So left shoulder is invisible behind the right. Two shoulder blades in one line. Continuously keep kicking. Kicking and stretching are equal and simultaneous. 50-50 body down. Kick up. Kick back. Kick up one more time. Change. All right. Let's go to the back of your mat for balancing stick. Tula Dandasana. We start with your feet together, arms over your head. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, thumbs cross. It's the same as half moon arms, so you're going to keep your biceps with your ears the entire posture. Chin up, body back, inhale, breathing, right foot steps forward, a big step. Lock both knees, come down, hinging from the waist. Body is a super, super tight T, as in thankful. Squeeze your palms. Squeeze your biceps with your ears. Stretch your palms forward. Stretch your toes back. Your stomach is in, and your body is stretching opposite directions. Beautiful, Rebecca. Change feet together, arms and head together. You're going to keep your arms there. Chin up. Body back. Left foot step forward. Big step. Lock both knees. Come down. Hinging from the waist. So when you get in your T position, your hips are parallel to the floor. All the muscles are tight. You're squeezing your biceps with your ears. You're stretching your palms forward. Stretching your toes back. Stomach is in, body stretching opposite directions. Change feet together, arms and head together, arms down side, take a breath. These girls are going to go to the top of their mat and then kind of face towards you. You can stay on your mat if you want. We're going to do standing separate leg stretching one time. Feet together, arms over your head. Right foot step to the right, a big step, four feet minimum, same time, arms down. So if you have any sciatic issues, you're going to keep your feet parallel. If you have no problems, you're going to pigeon toe your feet by bringing your toes in and heels out. Lock your knees, suck your stomach in, and stretch your body forward from the lower spine. Spine is straight, knees are locked all the way down there. If you're down there, you can grab your heels from behind five fingers together. If you can't grab the heels, you can grab the outsides of the feet. And if you can't do that, you can put your hands on the floor in front of you. Wherever you are, most important part, to lock the knees. So no bend behind the legs. You contract your quadriceps. Roll forward like a weight. wheel. Weight is on the toes. First leg stretching, then hip stretching. Eventually whole body stretching, top to bottom, 360 degree angle stretching. Pull on your heels, roll forward. You try to touch your forehead one more time. Change. Amazing, you guys. Go up slow. Head is one below the heart, so you don't want to rush back up. Right foot back to the place. Arms over your head. Arms down side. Next is the heart of the series. We're already there. Triangle pose. Trikonasana. Feet together. Arms over your head. Right foot step to the right. A big step. Four feet minimum. Same time. Arms down. Hips forward. Upper body back. Turn your right foot out all the way. Bend your knee and sit down. Bounce a couple of times. Your right thigh bicep is parallel to the floor. Hips stay down. Don't let them come up anymore and move your arms at the same time. Elbow in front of the knee. Look up towards the ceiling. Try to touch your chin to your shoulder so the paw of your face is visible in the front mirror. Left arm stretch up. Right arm stretch down. Arms are stretching in opposite directions. Left hip is down and forward towards the front mirror. Push the right knee back with the help of your right elbow. Twist your upper body back. Left knee is locked. Left foot is flat on the floor. Beautiful change. Right foot in. Hips forward, upper body back. Turn your left foot out all the way. Bend your knee and sit down. Bounce a couple of times. Left thigh bicep is parallel to the floor. Hips are down. Don't let them come up anymore. Right leg activated, straight. Move both arms at the same time. Elbow in front of the knee. Look up towards the ceiling. You try to touch your chin to your shoulder. Yes, chin. Good job. Right arm stretches up. Left arm stretches down. Arms are stretching in opposite directions. Right hip is down, rotated forward. Push your left knee back with the help of your left elbow. Twist your upper body back. Change. Left foot in. Right foot back to the place. Arms over your head. Arms down side. And just breathe. Shoulders relaxed. Mouth closed, breathe through the nose. Here we go, standing separate leg, head to knee. Feet together, arms over your head, palms together, only your thumbs crossed this time. 
Right foot step to the right. Three feet distance, 36 inches. Pivot all the way to the right, facing the right side. And then you bump your hips forward five times. You want two hip bones parallel the entire time. Backside foot, 45 degree angle. You're going to stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest and touch your forehead to your knee. On the way down, think throat chokes, stomach in. Head touches the knee. If it doesn't touch, you can bend the knee and separate the hands. Try to get the knee and forehead to touch. This is a compression posture. It's not a stretching posture. Maximum body weight to the front leg. So right hip up and left hip down. Two hips are in one line. One day these girls' hips look good and even. Stretch your palms forward beyond your toes. Lock your knees and slowly round up, thinking left hip forward, stomach in. Left hip forward, stomach in. Pivot all the way to the other side. Bump your right hip forward. Two hips in one line, parallel one day. Backside foot, 45 degree angle. Stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest. Touch your head to your knee. Think right hip forward, stomach in. Right hip forward, stomach in. If knee and head don't touch, you can bend the knee and separate the hands. If your head easily touches the knee, try to get it even higher above the knee to create more compression there. Maximum body weight to the front leg. So left hip up, right hip down. Stretch your palms forward beyond your feet. Lock your knees. Slowly round up. Keeping right hip forward, stomach in. Right hip forward, stomach in. All right, pivot facing the front of your mat. Right foot back to the place. Arms down side and go back to where you started for tree pose, Tadasana. Right leg lift up, grab from underneath with your left hand, bring it up all the way until your heel touches the costume. Sole of the foot faces the ceiling. Careful of your right knee, slowly gently push your right knee down and back. You try to get your two knees in one line from the side. Opening up your pelvis, same principle as in triangle posture. Spine is straight, stomach in, right hand to the center of your chest, if you can balance there, foot doesn't slip, left hand, center of your chest, spine is straight, stomach is in, standing leg is locked. Change, good, right leg down, arms down, other side, left leg lift up, grab from underneath with your right hand, bring it up all the way until your heel touches the costume, sole of the foot faces the ceiling. Careful of that left knee, slowly, gently push your left knee down and back. Try to get your two knees in one line from the side, spine is straight. Stomach in, left hand center of your chest. If you can balance there, foot doesn't slip. Right hand center of your chest, spine is straight. Stomach is in, standing leg is locked. Change, left leg down, arms down. Next is toe stand, it is a beginner posture. So if your knees feel good, try it. If they don't feel so hot, you can do tree pose again. The posture we just did. I'll walk you through toe stand with my voice. Right leg lift up, bring onto the middle of your thigh or higher. You're going to start this posture by changing your gaze to the floor four feet in front of you. Hands together in front of your chest. And then bend your body down from the lower spine. Touch both hands, ten fingers on the floor. When both hands touch, bend your knee and sit down on top of your heel. Bringing your hands to both sides, balancing on your fingertips, two knees in one line from the side. Drop your right knee down and point your right toes. Spine is straight, stomach in. Left hand center of your chest. Right hand center of your chest. Stretch your spine towards the ceiling. Come up off the heel and lift the gaze. Change hands from the floor. Go back up exact opposite way you went down. Go back to tree pose. Tree pose release. This is a progression posture, posture also. So you don't have to do all of it to get it right. You can start the posture by just changing your gaze to the floor four feet in front of you. Other side, left leg lift up. Bring into the middle of your thigh or higher. I like to bring my foot a little higher. Start the posture by changing your gaze to the floor four feet in front of you. Hands together in front of your chest. Or you can keep holding that foot, hinging from the waist. Bend your body down from the lower spine. When your hands touch the floor, you can bend your knee and sit down on top of your heel. Bringing your hands to both sides, balancing on your fingertips, two knees in one line from the side. Drop your left knee down, point your left toes. Spine straight, stomach in, left hand center of your chest, right hand center of your chest. Stretch your spine towards the ceiling, come up off the heel and lift the gaze. Change hands from the floor, go back up exact opposite way you went down. Come back to tree pose and tree pose release. All right, you guys, acknowledge your hard work if you like, then turn around, relax on your back in Savasana. Once you've had your water, you want to get into your Savasana. It goes like this, heels together, 
Toes fall open. Arms by your side, palms face up. Head straight, eyes open. Breathing always normal. Just relax. Dead body pose. Savasana. Sometimes the teacher chats you up during Savasana. Sometimes they leave you alone. Sometimes I just want to be left alone. So I'm quiet for you. All right, let's go ahead and start the floor series with wind removing pose, Savana Muktasana, right leg lift up. Grab a couple of inches below the knee, 10 fingers interlock. You're gonna pull your right knee down, out, avoid the rib cage, back in towards your shoulder. Left leg is straight and flat on the floor. If it's not, you're gonna flex the left foot, so calf muscles touching the floor. Tuck your chin to your chest, neck and back flat on the floor. Pull down hard, feel a pinch in your hip joint, maximum pressure in the lower abdomen, freeze there. Change, right leg down, arms down, left leg lift up. Grab a couple of inches below the knee, 10 fingers interlock, pull the left knee down. Out, avoid the rib cage, back in towards your shoulder. Right leg is straight and flat on the floor. If it's not, flex your right foot so your calf muscle is touching the floor. Tuck your chin to your chest, neck and back, flat on the floor, pull down hard. Feel a pinch in your hip joint, maximum pressure in the lower abdomen. Freeze there. Change, left leg down, arms down, both legs lift up. Grab your elbows each other over the legs, a couple of inches below the knees, nice and tight, compact. Feet together, relax side by side. Tuck your chin to your chest, neck and back, flat on the floor. Push your hips into the floor. Push the back of your neck closer to the floor. So eventually in the future, when your skeletal system, bone joints have improved, your entire spine will be flat on the floor from your tailbone all the way to the top of your head. That's really good, Becky. Change, legs down, arms down, relax, savasana. So you're going to do a bunch of sit-ups in between the postures. If you need to avoid the sit-ups for any reason, you can do so by rolling over to the side. If you want to join us for the sit-ups, they go like this. Feet together, flex your feet. Keep your heels on the ground throughout the sit-up. Arms over your head, thumbs crossed, palms facing the ceiling, arms and head together. Inhale, breathe in quickly. Sit up, touch your head to your knees, grab your toes, double jerk, elbows on the floor. Turn around and lay down on your stomach for the spine strengthening series. We begin with Cobra Pose, Bhujangasana. Chin is out, neck is flat on the floor. Get your hands, palms very close to your chest, underneath your shoulders, five fingers together, flat on the floor. Hip and leg muscles, solid concrete. You have only one leg like a cobra tail. You cannot open it or lift it off the floor. Arms in close to your body. Inhale, breathing, look up and go up. Using your 100% back strength until only your belly button is touching the floor. Drop your shoulders down. Drop your elbows down towards your hips. Trapezius muscles visible in the front mirror from the side. Your arms look like an L, like a rectangle. Chest up, go up, more up. Change. We're going to go right into the next posture. Skip the savasanas on the floor. Here we go. Locust pose. Arms underneath your body. Palms facing the floor. Little fingers touch. Spread your five fingers apart, grabbing the floor with your fingertips. Chin is out. Neck is flat on the floor. Left leg relaxed. Right leg solid, concrete. Lift your right leg up. Lock your knee and point your toes. Straighten out your leg. Engage your glute. Stretch your toes towards the back wall and lift your leg up. Change, lower down, right leg relax, left leg lock, solid concrete, lift the left leg up. Lock your knees, point your toes, straighten out your leg, engage your glute, stretch your toes towards the back wall, lift your leg up. Change, lower down, now mouth on the floor, readjust your hands, palms, try to get your elbows even closer underneath your body. You want to keep those arms straight. Palms on the floor, shift weight to your shoulders without bending your knees, both legs, lift them up, legs together. Feet together, knees are locked, pointed toes, go up, struggle a little bit harder, squeeze your butt, go up higher, change, lower down, good, let your arms out and then bring them out to the side like airplane wings for full locus. 
All right, hip and leg muscles solid, concrete. Inhale, breathing, look up and go up. Arms, body, head, chest, everything lifting up. 747, taking off, chest up, chest up. Arms up, arms back. Fingertips in line with the tops of your head. Only your hip bones are touching the floor. Exhale, breathe in, go up one more time. Change, beautiful, going straight to bow pose, Dhanurasana. You're gonna grab your feet from the outside, a couple of inches below the toes, five fingers together. Thumbs are with the index fingers. Wrists are straight, point your toes. If you can, bring your knees closer to start. Relax that grip, think relax your shoulders. Inhale, breathe and kick up, kick back. Look up and kick up. Then roll forward like a wheel until your toes are in the center from the side, you're on your rib cage. Relax your grip, bring your knees closer together. Look up, kick up, continuously keep kicking. Kick up one more time. Change, lower down, go ahead and push your body up. Go to the top of the mat for fixed firm pose, Supta Vajrasana. You're gonna stand up on your knees with your knees together. Open up your feet, sit between your feet. If you have any pain in your knees, hips, ankles, you can open up your knees a lot, as much as you want. You can also put some weight on your palms to relieve any pain or pressure. If you have no pain and your butt is all the way on the floor, then you can put your hands on your feet, thumbs inside, fingers outside, right elbow down, touch the floor, left elbow down, touch the floor, top of your head on the floor, shoulders on the floor, whole upper body relaxed on the floor. If you're all the way down there, you're gonna grab your elbows over your head and lift your chest and stomach up towards the ceiling creating a perfect human bridge. Eventually you can bring your knees together, but don't let them come off the floor. Change slowly, put your hands on your feet with the help of your elbows, you're gonna go up one at a time. Turn around and finally Savasana. You're welcome. I guess if you're at home, you can Savasana as much as you want. Pause, Savasana, pause, nap, whatever. All right, here we go, feet together, flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs cross, quickly sit up, touch your knees, grab your toes, double jerk. Turn around and sit in the middle of your mat, Japanese style for half tortoise. Hips and heels touching throughout the posture, arms over your head, palms together, only your thumbs are crossed this time. You're gonna stretch up and exhale, breathing, go down. You try to touch your forehead to the floor first, and then your little fingers on the floor. The rest of your arms are in the air. Stretch your palms more forward, so shoulder blades, scapula coming out of the body, chin is away from your chest, lean back. You try to keep your hips and heels touching, you lengthen that spine, try to straighten out your arms, chin is out, maybe the bridge of your nose touches the floor. Hips and heels touching, arms and head together, core tight. Go up slow with control. Good, arms down side, relax. Savasana. I, did, I was trying to decide if I was going to let you have one or not, but you could save your energy for camel. All right, here we go. Feet together. Flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs cross. Quickly sit up. Turn and go to the top of your mat for camel pose. We're going to do this one twice. Stand up on your knees. Hands on your hips, oh, six inches apart between your knees and feet. You can measure by putting the two fists between your knees if you need to. Hands on your hips, thumbs outside, fingertips facing the floor. So it's kind of like your hands are in your back pockets. Bring your elbows closer together behind your back. Exhale, breathing, push your hips forward, drop your head back as far as it goes, stop in the middle. Jen, Jen's showing you the grip. Now you can stay there with your hands on your hips. You don't have to go any further, but you feel good, then drop the right hand down. Grab the right heel, thumb, outside fingers, inside, left hand down. Grab the left heel, thumb, outside fingers, inside, full palms grip wherever you are. You're going to exhale, push your stomach, legs, and hips forward. Lift your chest. Your head is all the way back. Eyes are open. Change slowly, one hand on a hip at a time, chest up, spine straight. Turn around. You can relax. So awesome. You don't want to close your eyes. If you close your eyes, you might get dizzy. You don't want to get dizzy in that one because sometimes you get dizzy even with your eyes open. So let's not close your eyes in the back then. Mm. 
All right, here we go again. Feet together. Flex your feet. Arms over your head. Thumbs crossed. Quickly ease it up. Go to the top of your mat for second set camel. This time you can open your knees wider if you want, 8 to 10 inches, but still keep 6 inches between your feet. Hands on your hips, thumbs outside, fingertips facing the floor. Bring your elbows closer together behind your back. Exhale, breathing. Push your hips forward. Drop your head back. Stop in the middle. If you're ready, go ahead. Grab the heels. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. You don't have to grab the heels if you're not ready. Wherever you are, you're continuously lifting your hips, pushing them forward. Lifting your chest. Head is all the way back. If you're deep into this posture, really push your palms into your feet more. Lift your chest, accessing that upper spine more. Gorgeous, girls. Change. Hands on your hips. Chest up, spine straight at the end. Turn around. Relax. Savasana. All right, that was the deepest forward bend. I mean, that was the deepest backward bend. Next is the deepest forward bend. Feet together, flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs crossed, quickly sit up. Sit at the back of your mat, Japanese self or rabbit pose, Sasangasana. So if you need to modify this because you have a neck injury or something else, you can do what Jen's doing. I'm going to walk Rebecca through this, and she's going to show you the grip. Yeah. Okay. So you still start like you did with camel with hands on your hips like your hands are in your back pockets. You're going to slide your hands down, grab your heels, arches of your feet, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Tuck your chin to your chest. Exhale, breathing, you go down. Head touches the knees. Automatically top of your head touches the floor. And then exhale, breathing, you're going to lift your hips up all the way towards the ceiling. Rolling forward like a wheel until your arms, elbows are straight. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you're going to walk your knees towards your head without moving your head. Lift your hips up more. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. Suck your stomach in. Hips up more. Change. Slowly round out one vertebrae at a time. And turn around. Relax. Savasana. Savasana. Let's do it again. Feet together. Flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs crossed. Quickly sit up. Sit at the back of your mat, Japanese style for a rabbit pose again. You don't have to use a towel if you don't want, especially if you're not that sweaty. It's not really that necessary, but you can if you feel more secure. You're going to put the towel over your feet, grab your heels over the towel, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Tuck your chin to your chest. Exhale, breathing, go down. Top of your head touches the floor. Exhale, breathing. Lift your hips up all the way towards the ceiling. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you're walking your knees towards your head, lifting your hips up more. One day, 90 degree angle with their, those legs. Lift your hips up more. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. Suck your stomach in. Hips up more. Change. Slowly round out. One vertebrae at a time. Then turn around. Relax. Savasana. You get a little cramp there in your collarbone. You did that right. So don't be scared if that happens. Sometimes happens in the compression postures. All right, here we go. Feet together. Flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs crossed. Quickly sit up. Face the front of your mat for separate leg, head to knee with stretching pose. Right leg out corner-wise, bend your left leg. Create pressure with the left foot sole against the right thigh bicep, arms over your head. Turn to the right, grab your right foot a couple of inches below the toes, 10 fingers interlock, tuck your chin to your chest, touch your head to your knee. If your knee and head do not touch, then bend the knee. This is a compression posture. You want to get that knee and forehead to touch. Pull your elbows down and in, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll inside to the left. Push your knee down with the help of your forehead. Change, switch those legs, left leg out, right leg in. Arms over the head, turn to the left, grab your left foot a couple of inches below the toes, 10 fingers interlock, tuck your chin to your chest, touch your head to your knee. If knee and head don't touch, go ahead, bend it. Got to get the knee and forehead to touch. This is a compression posture. If your head easily touches the knee, then you're going to try to get it higher above the knee. Pull your elbows down and in. Right elbow down, right shoulder down, roll inside to the right, push your knee down with the help of your forehead. Change both legs forward together, lay down on your back. As soon as you touch, you're going to sit up and grab your big toes from the top with your middle and index finger and walk your hips back right and left 10 to 15 times until your knees lock. 
Pull on your toes, feet are flat, pinky toes back, spine straight, chin forward, stretch your body forward from the lower spine. If your legs are straight, maybe one day elbows outside the calves, lengthening that spine. You're trying not to round your back. If you feel a good stretch underneath your legs, maybe a little bit lower spine, but you really want to feel it underneath your legs. Pull, stretch, 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 change, relax. Savasana. Next one might be my favorite one. It changes. But I like those the next one a lot. Feels good. We're gonna twist out your spine one last time. Both sides. Leaving you feeling amazing. Feet together, flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs cross quickly. Sit up. All right, let's face the front of your mat for spine twisting posture, Ardha Matsandrasana. If you need to modify, you can bring the left leg out straight. Don't need to modify, left knee in, right heel over the knee corner. Heel touches the knee corner, foot flat on the floor, left arm up and over your knee. Push your knee back with the help of your elbow. Turn your wrist, try to grab your left knee with your left hand. Now look down, all three things touching each other, same spot on the floor, like Becky, knee, hand, and heel. Right arm on your back, palm is facing out. If you're ready to grab the thigh from behind, go for it. Spine straight, rib cage open. You're going to turn all the way right side. Look over your right shoulder. Each and every vertebrae and cartilage are twisting like a pearl necklace. Twist, 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 change. Flip those legs, maybe right leg out straight or bend the right knee. Left heel over the knee corner, heel touches the knee corner, foot flat on the floor. Right arm up and over your knee. Push your knee back with the help of your elbow. Turn your wrist. Try to grab your right knee with your right hand. Knee, hand, and heel touching each other. All same spot on the floor. Left arm on your back. Palm is facing out. You can grab the thigh from behind if you're ready. Spine straight. Rib cage open. Turn all the way left side. Look over your left shoulder. It's beautiful. Even each and every vertebrae and cartilage are twisting like a pearl necklace. Twist. 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 Change. Relax. Savasana. Maybe you practice this enough with us online. When everything opens up again, you can practice on the beach, at the pool, maybe your backyard before things open. That's the thing. This is the same every time. Bikram yoga is the same every time. So after you do it, You'll learn it, and you can do it anywhere you go. All right, here we go. Feet together. Flex your feet, arms over your head, thumbs cross. Quickly sit up. Turn and sit in the middle of your mat, Japanese style. If your knees hurt, you can sit Indian, Indian style or whatever is comfortable for you. We started with pranayama deep breathing, good for the lungs and respiratory system. We end with kapalbhati breathing, good for the digestive system and abdominal muscles. You're going to blow out by your mouth. Only exhale. The inhale happens automatically. Hands on your knees, elbows locked, spine is straight. Begin. <laughs> Belly goes in and out. Hard, fast exhales. Inhale happens automatic. <laughs> then we're going to go a little faster. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job, ladies. Turn around. And relax now in Savasana. So you can close your eyes if you want, spread your legs if you want, however you want to lay. Go for it, whatever is comfortable. But try to relax your entire body. You're not thinking, you're not holding tension, you're just relaxing. Maybe start with your feet, work all the way up to the top of your head. No work, no one to bother you. Hopefully, you are completely relaxed. Thanks, you guys, for watching us. You can follow us every day. Check out our YouTube channel. We have two, Bikram Yoga Columbia SC and Torch Bar. You can follow us live every day on BikramColumbiaLive.com. We have classes on Instagram.